Solar panels are made like this. What's this? It's a chip. This is a silicon wafer made for chips. And if we wanted to plaster uh, thousands of square miles with uh, Intel chips, the cost for that would be quadrillions of dollars. It would be impossible. Right? But like silicon wafers, solar power has had a ferocious cost decline, a ferocious and exponential cost decline. Over the course of roughly my lifetime, the cost of a watt of solar power has plunged by an incredible 200 times. That doesn't happen in physical infra infrastructure. It doesn't happen in tra tractors, it doesn't happen in trucks, it doesn't happen in cars. It happens in digital technology and in this one energy technology. And that means we're now seeing crossover, meaning that we now see solar winning deals without subsidies in various parts of the world. Of course, that varies by geography, by where you have the sun. In the US, it's in the southwest. Though we can transmit solar power as long as 1,000 miles or more with a few percent losses. In worldwide, it happens, uh, especially in places where the 1.3 billion people that don't have electricity today live. And about three quarters of the world's growth in energy consumption over the next few decades will be in that square, which is a relatively sunny area, sunnier than Europe, for instance, that really led the development of solar. Now, I told you crossover is happening. Trends are nice. Let's talk actual physical cases. This is a natural gas plant in the US. The EIA estimates this costs seven and a half cents per kilowatt hour if you build a new one. Right, so what's happening in solar? In Chile, we've had about a dozen deals won for solar, won this deal at an average price of about six cents per kilowatt hour without subsidies. China, the Gobi Desert, also about six cents. India, the Sambar Ultra Plant, four gigawatt plant, an enormous plant the size of four large coal-powered plants in capacity at 4.3 rupees per kilowatt hour, about six cents per kilowatt hour. In the US, this is a subsidized price. Two years ago, first solar won this bid at 5.7 cents. Uh, last year, NextEra won a new bid at 4.2 cents. I have to keep updating this slide. And then about six months ago, first solar sold to Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett's firm, a 3.9 cent per kilowatt hour deal. And then last month, the city of Palo Alto bought solar from a company in LA at 3.6 cents per kilowatt hour. Now, this is a subsidized price, but back out all the subsidies, it's about five cents per kilowatt hour, still about a third lower than the price of new natural gas, and it's producing at peak demand time. Right? And around the world, it's even better than that. Mexico, the average price in their solar auction last month was 5.1 cents. The lowest price was three and a half cents unsubsidized. And then these guys, well, this is the price in the US. You see in the last eight years, it's plunged by about 80%. Just a phenomenal pace of change. If you have an impression of solar or wind formed a decade ago, the world has changed enormously in that time. And that's what the new numbers are, those points at the, at the far right there. Or this is my favorite. In Dubai, one of the oil capitals of the world, this 800 megawatt plant, giant plant, being built. Uh, Aqua Power, a Saudi firm, is one of the groups behind this. And the price bid with no subsidies for this plant, for the next tranche, was 2.99 cents a kilowatt hour, half the price of natural gas or coal. So in the last three years, we've gone from solar being completely uncompetitive to solar in sunny parts of the world, crushing all other competitors as far as price goes. And that has helped drive an enormous explosion. I told you that wind power scaled by 1,000%, 10x in a dozen years. Solar has left that in the dust 100 times growth in 13 years. Now, it's starting from a lower base, but that growth rate has been phenomenal. And if we put a trend on a log scale, which this is, is an exponential scale, and we see a straight line, that's an exponential. This is about a 40% cumulative annual growth rate over the last 20 years happening in solar. It will eventually slow down, it must. But for now, this explosion is unlike anything that we've seen in energy. Now, this happens for a lot of reasons. Manufacturing scale, 
One of the first exponentials we ever saw, actually, going back to the Model T, is you make more of something. This is cumulative volume of production on the horizontal axis, and the price drops on a log axis. This is the learning curve. And you can plot this on the Model T. You can plot this on a Boeing aircraft. You can plot this on wiring and buildings. Here it's plotted on solar. And this learning curve is quite ferocious. It's about a 20 to 25% reduction in cost per doubling of scale. And that's going to keep on going, keep on going for quite some time to come. And that allows the industry to reinvest revenue in R&D to make more and more efficient cells that capture more of the sunlight that hits them.